This is the city, Los Angeles, California. It's a fine place to enjoy life. There are places reserved just for kids when they're young and feel young. Places they go when they're young and feel old, beginning the big search for something that often doesn't exist in the places they look for it. They might find it here, or here, or maybe here. They could try looking here. Their search might end with a college degree. One thing sure, whatever they're looking for cannot be found inside a number five capsule. It's the motion picture capital of the world. Some come to Los Angeles to see the stars or try to become one. Others come here and die. Two and one half million people live here. Every month, 5,000 more crowd in. Tourists spend over a billion, 100 million dollars a year in Southern California. It's a big business. On Alvera Street, you can buy the best Mexican handcrafts this side of Mexico City. Anything you're looking for, Los Angeles has it. If it's for sale, you can buy it. The city is one big shopping center. Retail stores in Los Angeles take in more than $2 million a day. Some products aren't sold so openly. Marijuana is one of them. A bag like this goes for $15. It's called a lid. The finished cigarette is called a joint. It sells on the street from 50 to 75 cents. The seller claims it's heaven. The buyer soon finds out it's hell. It's a closed contract until we find out. This is Wilshire Boulevard. 40 years ago, these were bean fields. Now they call it the Miracle Mile. This is MacArthur Park. It's on Wilshire Boulevard. For 90 cents, you can rent a boat for half an hour. A lot of old people live around the park. Most of them draw pensions. You can live pretty good in Los Angeles on a pension, if you're careful. When you're old, sometimes you need good medical facilities. The city has them. A lot of people earn a living here, and there are a lot of ways to do it. Some of them have jobs that weren't even thought of five years ago. Some of them are learning jobs guaranteed to be obsolete in another five. A few work in the cleanest places on earth, and a few don't. They all have one thing in common. It takes a day's work to get a day's pay. Not everybody buys the idea. There are a lot of ways around it. Like every place else, money is what makes it go, and there are a lot of ways of getting it. You can earn it. You can speculate for it. You can win it, sometimes. You can borrow it, or even buy it. If you're desperate enough, you can steal it. On Spring Street, you'll find the Pacific Coast Stock Exchange and the big banks. You can borrow a million dollars on a few minutes notice, if your credit's good enough. The people who make or get the million dollar loans usually live a long way from their work. Many of them here in Bel Air. Hundred thousand dollar homes are commonplace here. So are half million dollar estates. The good life of Bel Air attracts some of the best lawyers, doctors, bankers and merchants. It also attracts some of the best thieves. Every day the population increases by almost a thousand. It begins to get crowded. Three million people were here ahead of them. There are all kinds, the young and the old. Those who love and those who hate. Some people claim it's a collection of suburbs, not a city at all. Others say that in 10 years, every city in America will look like Los Angeles does today. One thing's sure, it's a city that's not afraid to experiment, where the unusual is taken for granted. 5,000 people move to Los Angeles every month. The Los Angeles County Art Museum. To some, this might be an incentive to settle here. A block away, you can look at the city and its inhabitants the way things were 10 million years ago. This is East 5th Street, home address for dreams that never came true. A few people believe that life owes them something, and the way to collect it is at the point of a gun. It's a good place to live. We try to keep it that way. It's a full-time job. Every 60 seconds, a crime is committed in Los Angeles. In the Los Angeles Police Department's communications center, the telephone rings every 20 seconds, 24 hours a day. 
Of the three million people who live in Los Angeles, 35,000 of them are known rapists, murderers, and thieves. They outnumber the police force, seven to one. Every time a policeman answers a call, he takes a calculated risk. There'll always be somebody out there who doesn't like him, and who might have a gun. It sprawls over 467 square miles, and three million people call it home. It's the biggest police beat in the world, yet it has fewer policemen per thousand population than any major city in the United States. On paper, one policeman must protect and serve more than 600 citizens. It's a big job and a big responsibility. Every police officer carries a gun. Once a month on the pistol range, he has to prove he knows how to use it. Someday he may have to. It's a city on wheels, constantly on the move. There are three and a half million cars in Los Angeles, over 132 miles of freeways. The maximum speed limit is 65 miles an hour. This is Central Receiving Hospital. On an average day, there are 161 accidents. Every month, 37 people die. It's a high price to pay to get somewhere in a hurry, especially when they never get there. This is where their cars end up, what's left of them. This is where the victims end up, what's left of them. It's a big city with a big heart, and it offers a lot. Museums, libraries, galleries, playgrounds, beaches, valleys, and mountains. Angelinos are proud of our new Griffith Park Zoo, which houses animals from all over the world. The King of Beasts, and his jester. The proud, and the profane. Not all of the wolves and jackals who come to Los Angeles are in the zoo. A lot of them wind up in the city jail. Like any other city, there are a great many ways to make money here, or lose it. This is one way. In the state of California, it's legal, provided you buy a ticket of admission and place your bets here. In California, over $600 million is wagered annually at racetracks, all open, above board, and within the law. Like any other legitimate business where great amounts of money are involved, there are those who cut themselves in for an illegal percentage. Sections of this volume were enacted just for them. It all begins with a 10 cent phone call to a man who keeps his business records on a plastic tabletop and who doesn't bother to enter his profit and loss in the company ledger. Or who keeps his records on a highly volatile material known as flash paper. A simple kitchen match is often his key to freedom. In 1920, the population was 576,673. Today, Los Angeles is the third largest city in the United States. Nearly three million people live here. From every nation, Los Angeles draws its bloodline. It's a big place, and getting bigger all the time. 20 years ago, this was our telephone book. Today, it takes these five books to do the same job. People move here from all over the country, looking for a new life. Some leave their inhibitions back where they came from, and sometimes their sense of right and wrong. Los Angeles has a lot of everything. People, a police administration building, and 16 geographical police divisions. North Hollywood Division, Wilshire Division, West Valley Division, Van Nuys Division, Hollywood Division. Los Angeles has one of the largest artificial harbors in the world. This is San Pedro. It has a baseball team. This is where they play, Dodger Stadium. It has a sports arena. This one will handle ice hockey, a rodeo, a championship fight, or a national political convention. It has Hollywood, and it says so on the side of a mountain. It has golf courses, lots of them, public and private. You can trace the history of man, his habits, his progress, right here the Los Angeles County Museum. A lot of people are born in Los Angeles every day, many of them here at the county hospital. A lot of people die in Los Angeles every day. A lot of people get married. A lot get divorced. With 280,000 cats and over a quarter of a million dogs, it's a city with a love for animals. If you don't have one at home, you can visit the zoo. 
There are 900 species here from all over the world. In the heart of the city is a memorial to prehistoric Los Angeles. You can walk among the first inhabitants of the basin. The saber-toothed tiger, the giant mastodon. They roamed this land long before man. Now they're extinct, unable to survive within nature's delicate balance. Some people try to upset today's balance. When they do, I go to work. In the rolling hills just above Sunset Boulevard lies the exclusive community of Bel Air. It all looks quiet and serene, just as it did on the morning of November 6th, 1961. On that day, Fire Chief Sawyer received a call about a small brush fire in the area. The fire raged out of control for three days. It consumed 484 houses, 21 buildings, and destroyed 6,000 acres of watershed. The fire was finally controlled. Not one life was lost. Bel Air has rebuilt its houses and most of the burn scars have been healed. Nature can sometimes create havoc for a city. So can some of its people. It's a large place with a small history. Its origin lies in the missions which can be found in the area. Mission San Gabriel was the first one in Los Angeles. It sheltered 1,300 Indians and spread out over many acres with its shops, granaries, and chapels. Adventurous pioneers started immigrating from Mexico, 1,000 miles and seven months of hard travel. By 1795, there were five ranchos in the area and a new mission was built in San Fernando. These missions became the center of activity, protecting the settlers and providing a place to gather. In peace, they were places of worship. During war, they became forts. From these missions sprang the towns, then the cities. The way of life is different today. People can't use the protection of mission walls. It's a modern city. Some say the one of the future. It's all electronic and computerized. They've got computers here that can read and store 140,000 words in 2.5 microseconds. Others that can plot probability curves for anything you care to predict in a man's life. They can do the same for his death. The machines can tell you that of the average 25,000 people who will die in Los Angeles this year, 300 of them, or 82 hundredths of 1%, will die by an act of murder. That's a small percentage. But it's one I deal with. With over 5,600 Little League baseball teams in the city, its youngsters have a love for the game. After 69 years in Brooklyn, the Dodger baseball team came west. They chose Los Angeles for their new home and became the first major league team on the West Coast. Their new stadium was built to accommodate 56,000 fans. In the first year in Dodger Stadium, 2,750,000 people watched the club play, a new major league attendance record. Baseball is the sport of Americans. It teaches youngsters fair play. Sometimes they never seem to learn the lesson. When they don't, I go to work. It's a magnet that seems to attract the young. Outdoor restaurants along Sunset Boulevard all cater to would-be movie stars of the future at one time or another. Los Angeles is also the center of the pop music world. Thousands of youngsters come out here with guitars in hand to try to crack the shell of success. It's also a city in which to bury one's identity. Teenage runaways from all over the country end up here on the Sunset Strip. A life free from parents, schools, responsibility. The hippie life, a world of psychedelic posters and faddish outfits. To the hippies, the rest of the world is square. They're young people looking to change the future. Like others, sometimes they get a little over anxious, and when they do, I go to work. The people here, like anywhere else, put in a hard day. After work, they want to get home. It can take 10 minutes or two hours. Once there, they like to unwind. They can go out to one of 560 movie theaters. For those who can't get a babysitter, there are 27 drive-ins. This is the city of the drive-in. Supermarkets, restaurants, dry cleaners, even banks. 
There are drive-in car washes, 125 of them. Life in Los Angeles is fast and convenient. It's a great place to live. I try to help keep it that way. Like every other city, it has its parks. And like parks and park benches everywhere, these are green, comfortable spots for sunbathing and quiet conversation. This one's a little different, Hollywood Park, where they're often running five days a week. There are few benches or quiet conversations here and everything green doesn't grow on trees. The Spaniards introduced horse racing to the city in the late 1700s. In no time, it became the featured event at most county fairs. By the early 1900s, it was the third largest industry in the state. Hollywood Park opened its gates in 1938, exhibiting one of the most beautiful racetracks in the world. Here, horses and jockeys compete for split-second fortunes. It's properly named the Sport of Kings. This year at Hollywood Park alone, over $170 million will ride on the tote boards. With an average daily attendance of 30,000 people, there'll be a lot of winners. For the others, losing may become a habit. In my job, I meet a lot of losers. If you look hard enough, you can find the dreams of many men buried here. One such dream can be seen in the community of Venice. Millionaire manufacturer Abbott Kenny came to Los Angeles to investigate the plight of local Indians, and he stayed on. He founded the city of Venice in 1904. Wanting it to look like its namesake, he dug 16 miles of canals. And he stocked them with imported Venetian gondolas, complete with singing boatmen. To his dismay, Kenny found people were more interested in the beach than in his canals and his cultural buildings. Less than a year after its Independence Day christening, Kenny began turning his dream city into an imitation Coney Island. By 1930, most of the canals were filled on demand of the property owners. The remaining ones were drained. Everybody has their dreams. Some are looking for the material things, others just a long, healthy life. I work hard to give them an opportunity to pursue those dreams. More than 50,000 people fly in and out of here every day. Los Angeles International is one of the busiest airports in the country. Planes from all over the world touch down here daily, but airplanes didn't always look the same. Los Angeles played host to the first international air meet held in the United States. That was January of 1910. It was quite a display. In this small dirigible, the pilot had to walk to the tail to make it rise. A short 10 years later, Donald Douglas was finishing the Cloudster in back of a Santa Monica barber shop. This plane launched the aircraft industry in Los Angeles. Many of the large aerospace firms are direct descendants of the airplane building companies that took root here in the early 30s. Today, the aerospace industry is a major source of employment. Almost 300,000 men and women work in these plants. The industry, with its constantly changing technology, remains a magnet to those seeking worthwhile employment. Sometimes people seek employment outside the law. When they do, I try to stop them. There are many well-known residential areas here. Beverly Hills, Bel Air, Holmby Hills. But as a business address, it's hard to top Wilshire Boulevard. Wilshire runs 16 miles from downtown Los Angeles through Westwood and Santa Monica to the Pacific Ocean. A panorama of glamour, glass, and enterprise. On its way, the famous street bends through MacArthur Park and then straightens out for the Miracle Mile. It passes the County Museum of Art and many interesting places to shop. One store will sell you clothes that have been worn only once or twice by famous film stars. Another specializes in apparel for the tall and lean woman. A third carries styles for the small women who wear size nine only. The boulevard is lined with 37 banks, 10 hotels, 17 department stores, and 54 office buildings. Most of the businesses in the city are reputable. They serve the people and they deliver what they promise. Once in a while, one comes along that doesn't. When I hear about them, I go to work. It used to be the only culture here was found in yeast cans. 
That time has passed. A city has grown out of a frontier town. Today, the Los Angeles Music Center stands where Adobe's once clustered. This breathtaking three-theater complex competes with the finest performing artists for the undivided attention of a generous patronage. Unified by landscape malls and underground parking, each theater is dedicated to a different cultural experience. The Dorothy Chandler Pavilion is home for the Philharmonic Orchestra. While experimental drama is an unswerving commitment at the Mark Taper Forum, only established works of wide appeal can be seen at the Amundsen Theater. For those who like their culture outdoors, there's the Hollywood Bowl or the Greek Theater. Los Angeles has grown up. Culture has flowered where mesquite once bloomed. There's also crime. That's where I come in. 25 miles from the heart of the Civic Center lies the Port of Los Angeles. It's the largest man-made harbor in the world. With a fleet of over 700 fishing boats, it's become the most important commercial fishing center in the nation. It's a bustling port which handles goods coming into the country from all over the world. There are agencies set up to handle most of the harbor's problems. Occasionally, things get out of hand in the city. When they do, I go to work. Seven hundred thousand of its citizens have their roots in different countries. Some are here in search of work, others for a chance to be free. Many have come not knowing why. There's something here for all of them. You can find foods of every nationality. At the farmer's market where produce is shipped in from many different lands. Or in Chinatown with oriental atmosphere and bean sprouts to match. For those who like it hot, there are 263 Spanish restaurants. There is also Alvera Street, an authentic mercado specializing in Mexican products. This is a city with a lot of different tastes. They don't always mix well. When they don't, I go to work. Artists and sculptors have recently become trendsetters, often reflecting the mood of the city. Its fashions are colorful and exciting. The outdoors have become a way of life, and water sports rate high among our favorites. With 65 miles of coastline, it's no wonder Angelinos love the beach. On a summer day, there are upwards of a quarter of a million people here. Once you've arrived, you can find barbecue pits, volleyball courts, and a cooling ocean breeze. Life is good here under the warm California sun. It's a great place to live, but in my job, it can be a tough city to work. I carry a badge.